too. So if you have a, a beverage or not and just want to join us, Smith, it's lovely to see your daughter. She's beautiful. And Catherine, it's lovely to see faces. Amanda, Teresa, uh, Ernesto. So really excited, fun, um, happy hour. And we'll probably have some serious questions too. We There's lots of interesting things going on, but we have three amazing panelists. Um, this is National Travel and Tourism Week, and it's also National Economic Development Week. I got those right. Yes? Can you nod? Yeah. Anybody? Yes. Okay. And, uh, and you've been getting, as Progress Week One members, you've gotten invitations to other um, Zoom and other public events that, um, that the Convention and Visitors Bureau Destinational Paso has been hosting also along with the El Paso County Economic um, Development Team and El the City of El Paso Economic Development Team. So. Um, there's been a lot of great webinars. Um, earlier, Brooke was going through some of them and you've got invitations as well, but, um, but that's kind of our excuse to get together virtually on Cinco de Mayo um, and um, to have a little happy hour together and um, a great, some great conversation about tourism and economic development and some fun as well. So thanks for joining us. And um, I am the Emily Loya, the treasurer for Progress 321 and um, for my paid job, I work for PBS El Paso. And I, I have fun hosting these with um, so many wonderful folks. So I'm really happy to have Jessica Herrera from the city of El Paso, Andrea Atkins Hutchins from, the, from El Paso County, and of course, Brian Crow from Destination El Paso with us today. But I'm gonna let them kick it off and um, just introduce themselves a little bit about the role. Many of you may know them, um, but you may not know all of them or exactly what um, they're doing. So if you just wanna introduce yourself what you do, and you can also share a little bit about what you're really focused on these days in our current situation. So um, I'll let Jessica start because she is our Progress DT1 um, now board chair officially. So. Yay! <laughs> I don't know if that's like a yay or like, oh my God. But um, it's a yay. thank you guys. <laughs> thank you so much for um, uh, letting us uh, jump in and be part of the Cinco de Mayo happy hour. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, Jessica Herrera, I was uh, born and raised here in El Paso. I'm super proud to still be a part of this community. I got a chance to come back to El Paso. It's going to be uh, seven years in March. Um, so it's been like time just went by super, super fast and um, definitely trying to keep my sanity at the moment. Um, but uh, there's, there's a lot happening. Um, you know, even with all um, uh, the news that we see and hear and just the conversations that we're involved with, um, I think there's a lot more positive that we could just still focus on. There's a lot of points of inspiration for me. Um, uh, my job is Director of Economic Development with the city. And so I get to really work closely with so many different types of people, places, industries, um, uh, folks just across the, the county, state, and, and others, and it's, it's always uh, a brand new day. There's, there's always something going on, um, which makes this job super fun and very blessed that um, we're really a part of, um, you know, just continuing to make our community a lot stronger uh, because we were strong. We're just going to be a lot stronger now, um, just moving forward um, over these next uh, few months and years ahead. So happy to be here with everyone. Thanks, Jessica. Um, we'll continue with the ladies first vibe. So we'll let Andrea um, Atkins Hutchins from El Paso County um, introduce herself next. Thank you. And you can just call me Andrea Hutchins. You don't have to do the whole hyphenated thing. That was okay, thing cool. Was I was so Martin Elliott for a long time and then I just dropped the middle because I couldn't do it. I should have. I should have. Anyway, so yeah, so Andrea Hutchins, I'm the Economic Development Director for El Paso County. As many of you likely know, I am not from El Paso, um, but I do have the pleasure of getting to work with you all now and, and really getting to enjoy um, the great community that, that is El Paso. So one of the great things about working in the county is that, um, you know, we really get the full flavor of the El Paso area. Um, everything from, you know, the, the farm uh, areas out in Tornillo to, um, you know, the, the great folks that are in um, San Elisario doing some amazing things with urban agriculture and, and um, tourism and, and heritage tourism. Our office does also run the heritage tourism arm of the county. Um, so many of you may or may not know that we actually own a few different properties out in the San Eli area and then some other 
um, historic assets throughout the county. And so we are working um, closely with Jessica on economic development projects, and then also with Brian and his team, hopefully getting some additional tourism things off the ground. Um, so we had some amazing plans in place for 2021. Um, and I am just kind of taking this opportunity, uh, working at home. I thought I wouldn't have as many meetings, but as you all know, <laughs> I'm sure you're suffering from the same thing. It's like I have more meetings than probably what I would have had before, but we're still marching forward with all those 2021 plans and, and really doing what we can to take advantage of the federal stimulus money that's out there, um, not only for the small businesses, but for the programs that we're trying to put in place. So anyway, so I'm very excited to be here and excited to get to, to work with the great team that I do. So thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. And um, I'll remind you guys as panelists, um, it's happy hour, it's fun. You can have fun questions. Um, it's okay if you have a couple of serious questions too. Definitely have a drink, enjoy. Um, so if you wanna send the questions into the chat and I'll try to incorporate those as we go, they can be for all the panelists or for a specific panelist if you like. Um, so just priming that up. So we have some in the queue hopefully. And I'm going to in ask Brian Crow to introduce himself now. All right, well, thank you, Emily. Uh, I'm Brian Crow, I'm general manager and CEO for Destination El Paso. And we are uh, the destination marketing and venue and event management arm of the city and the surrounding area. Uh, I think most of you know our team. I've got a couple of them on here. I see Veronica, Amanda, and Brooke are participating here as well. Um, yeah, like Andrea said, I think all of our days are really full of lots of different Zoom meetings. I just got off my third one. Uh, this afternoon. So I, that's, I'm excited to do one that has a happy hour component. So, and of course, somebody actually just brought me this to my house. One of my employees, Trudy, delivered me a cocktail for this event. So I'm showing off her awesome uh, lemonade shine beverage here. I wish you could all taste it. It's fantastic. Where's our cocktail? Um, you asked, what's that? Yeah, Where's right. I mean, get, yes. Why didn't we get uh, why, one? Why, why aren't your employees delivering cocktails to your doorstep, <laughs> Jessica? Um, no, so I would kind of give a recap of kind of what's going on for us. I, I like, I like a lot of um, industries in the tourism uh, segment and hospitality segment, we have uh, been impacted significantly. Um, venues and events have virtually stopped, uh, which is a primary revenue source for our operation. And then hotel stays and taxes under those hotel stays um, have, have, have dropped out as well, which is another way that we fund what our operations are. So unfortunately, we have seen some furloughs uh, in our organization and reduction in the workforce to be able to weather this current period. But we are taking advantage of this time um, to really be strategic about what our next steps will be. Uh, I had an opportunity, thanks to Jessica, to brief our city council last week on that strategy. Um, and we've uh, messaged out to the hospitality community through a stakeholder meeting the week before and then have had some follow-up meetings with our advisory board and others but uh, in short um, we do see that there is an opportunity uh, for El Paso here and I think that 2020 is going to be the year of the road trip and, I, and so we're looking at an expanded reach in our marketing for drive travel uh, into El Paso. Uh, we are very eager to welcome back uh, Mexican nationals uh, to El Paso. Uh, from northern Mexico, from Chihuahua, Torreon, and the surrounding region, and obviously our sister city, Juarez, as well. Uh, something that we don't typically do, we will kick off our efforts really looking here locally um, and really getting sort of the sort of staycation and getting locals out um, to area hospitality businesses. We think it's going to be important for all of our El Pasoans to be able to be great ambassadors of the community and life coming off of the off of the the pandemic can be a little bit different in terms of what businesses are open and how they conduct business and we want our El Pasoans to be fully uh, you know be fully briefed and had a great experience doing that so they can welcome friends and family to El Paso and know how to explore their city uh, you know following uh, kind of in the in the new normal I think is a phrase we've all heard quite a bit so that's what's going on for us here at Destination El Paso. Awesome. Thanks. That made me think of something because, you know, this is a great group to share it with. Um, you've got like a digital ambassador program, kind of a new quiz thing that you can do. It's been up a couple of, it might've been up longer, but I, I think Brooke or Veronica sent it to me and I think I've done most of it. I need to finish my training, but it's pretty fun. So that's, can you tell us a little more about that and yeah, like of where we can do it and other things that we might want to do to be great ambassadors to our city while we may have some extra time in a digital space these days? 
Yeah, so we have a, a Visit El Paso Ambassador Program, um, and it's a computer-based training module um, that, that our team developed the content for, that the programming was done for here locally with our friends at Hello Amigo. Um, and so it lets us build um, individual um, sort of like lessons and training components about our community so that um, you can be a great uh, uh, ambassador of El Paso. And there are points and there's kind, of, there's kind of a game component to it as well. So it's a lot of fun. And even as you master the, uh, the initial training components, we will be continuing to add uh, new modules and new segments um, to, to this tool so that you can, you can remain uh, up to date and current. And if you're really into it, you can challenge your friends and get other friends to join and you get more points based on how quickly you do it. And there's other kinds of cool things that are related to it. But uh, it's something that we're very proud of. Uh, we looked at a number of different national models for this. And uh, we, thought, we thought that we could build a better version of it ourselves. And so we are really excited that our friends at Hello Amigo were on board to do the programming end for us. And then our team in visitor services, which is led by Veronica and Nora, uh, worked on all of the content. And the link has just been sent out to all of you here. It's training.visitelpaso.com. And we're always looking for new modules. So if there's something that you know a lot about that you think we should share, it's always great to have people help, help us author those and build content for it. And you can reach out to our team and we'd love to talk to you about it. That's awesome and great shout out to Annalisa, yes, and the team at Hello Amigo. I thought it was, it was really nicely done. And it's exciting to hear that it's gonna to continue to evolve. Um, so, um, okay, well, Jessica, why don't you go? Um, what, let's do something fun. Um, what are you doing for fun in the midst of 700 Zoom meetings and a million calls or to stay for fun or to stay sane in these days? Just any tips uh, and ideas? I am, I'm cooking. Um, so Ooh. I am uh, probably gaining uh, too many pounds, um, but I am cooking. Uh, I really enjoy it. You know, I think if, if I could, I would probably open up my own, my own little restaurant or I would probably go back to culinary school um, because I, I was about to years, many years ago. Um, but then I decided to push it off and push it off. But I, I absolutely love the culinary world. So I follow all sorts of chefs and I've been doing all sorts of recipes and I don't know, it just relaxes me. And so I've been spending a lot of time in the kitchen and I love to host. So as soon as this is over, I mean, I'm happy to bring you guys over and have a, a nice big party. But my life other than work surrounds itself around family and food. <laughs> and, and that's, that's it. it. Very El Paso. That sounds great. Some of us are having yeah. to distance a little more our families than we wish, right? Um, so that's definitely part of it going yes. on. Andrea, I know that you um, are newer to our city, but what are you doing to stay connected and have fun and stay sane in the midst of everything? What's your outlet? So um, I actually live on Fort Bliss still right now. So um, you know, as far as staying connected, I, I still get to see my neighbors from a distance. Um, that is one of the nice things about living on post. Chris Linder, who I see is on the call, used to be one of my neighbors. I could look down the street and see him, um, but not anymore. So um, that is one of the nice things, though, about being on post is that uh, it definitely is a, a close-knit um, community. And you know, I just had somebody while they're not dropping off um, beverages at my house, um, somebody dropped off toilet paper. So, um, so that's really nice. And you know, my my husband's deployed right now in Afghanistan, and so there is still a group of um, spouses that you know we kind of look out for one another and just make sure that you know everybody's okay in this kind of weird um, weird time. So, and then I have like a full gym in my basement. Um, so that's where I spend like 99% of my time. It just keeps me sane and it prevents me from overeating and, and over drinking. <laughs> or if you do, at least you can make up for it. You know, if you have a little too much at one point point. and Brian, what are you doing? I think I saw that you took a very social distancing getaway recently in our region talking about road trips and all. Yeah. So courtesy of the governor's decision to open some things up a little bit, um, we took a little bit of a road trip out into the Big Bend region. Um, I've been to Marfa and Alpine and Fort Davis in the past, but not ever made it down to uh, Terlingua and Lajitas and really the gateway to both Big Bend State Park uh, and the National Park. The National Park remains closed, but the State Park is open uh, sort, of for, sort of for day exploration. 
And so I uh, did that over the weekend, went out and uh, checked that out, a community I've, I've never been to. Uh, you know, we partner closely uh, with the Big Bend region and, and market El Paso as the gateway to Big Bend, uh, not, not just, just the parks themselves, but also the communities that make up the Big Bend region. So it was good to get out there and see some of that stuff firsthand. And there's nobody out there for miles. So it's a great social distancing. You're also digitally distanced as well. Um, there's no phone service or internet or anything in between. So you really kind of get to take in all of, of West Texas, that component. So it's, it was kind of a cool, uh, cool trip. That's awesome. It looks beautiful. Um, break down in terms of that, like do more percentage of people come to El Paso and then go to the Big Bend or do more people go to some other part of Texas and then drive to the Big Bend? Do you know that? Like in how, how we position for that? You know, I'm not sure if there's specific data on that. We definitely know that there's a lot of folks that drive from the Central Texas region, specifically the Austin area um, and travel. Um, to the Big Bend region. I mean, it's, it is uh, the Big Bend State Park or State Ranch Park is the largest uh, state park in Texas Parks and Wildlife System. And it's one of the larger parks in the country. Um, and then of course it's immediately adjacent to a, a very large national park. Um, we, we try to focus on for people that are going to do for fly-in, um, that they use the El Paso International Airport as their gateway access point. Um, you know, they come and stay in our community, they explore, spend a day, a day and a half in El Paso on their way in or on their way back uh, from the Big Bend region. For, for drive travel, uh, we do something similar. We encourage people to keep going. Uh, just after you've driven the seven to eight hours from Central Texas into the Big Bend region, I want you to come a little bit further and come all the way out uh, to El Paso and see what we have to offer. Um, the uh, was it the there's a visit Big Bend uh, music festival that uh, that we've partnered with uh, in the past, really trying to connect ourselves to that community so that you know just like we're looking at generating creating El pa uh, ambassadors for El Paso here in El Paso, we want El Paso ambassadors in the region as well, and so having them be familiar um, with our community and so that they're providing great information two tourists are coming through and saying, hey, what else should I do? Where else should I go? We want them to recommend um, that trip to El Paso to check out some of the things that we're, that we're doing in the, in the area. That sounds great. Well, I love that you guys continue to build ambassadors and a lot of different creative approaches and making sure folks that can be outlets for us um, and mouthpieces for our community, not just locals, but um, key influencers from around the country and around the world. Um, I think you've had really great success with that. Okay, so we've got a fun question for Taco Tuesday slash Cinco de Mayo um, and very El Paso question. So this comes from Annalisa Silverstein. I thank her for the question. Do you have a favorite taco in El Paso or the region being that it's Taco Tuesday? So you can just jump in whoever wants to go first. Some people have to ponder these questions longer than others. Of our three. And others, you can just write your comments in the chat if you want to include your favorite taco from El Paso as well. So Brian looks ready, so go ahead. Yeah, I guess I hate to be the only one, uh, the only one talking. So I guess it depends on like what, you know, I guess what, what, you, what you want to enjoy. I often find myself um, at, um, I'm, I'm blanking on, uh, on, on, on the name here, which I, which I, which I can't believe. Um, you have to come back to me. I've literally, I think, I think I've had too much of this, whatever this is. I can't so, make okay, my way work. Right. I, see I, see I, I was going to say, my, yeah, I, I know mine. So it, it's not just one. So it, it's, it's a place. I get like a plate every time I go at El Ami. I do the cod, the brisket, and the rabbit, like, or the duck. I'm sorry, the duck trio. Like, every time. I love that place. Um, if you guys haven't been to El Ami, turned it into tacos, though. Oh, they're such high-end but amazing tacos. I've had like their Brussels sprouts taco and some other stuff too. There's some really great things, but thank you, Andrea. Okay, Jessica, you're next. Come on. So I think um, mine are tacos al pastor. And I love um, taco Santa Cecilia. Um, that was over by um, Alameda, like closer to the UMC area, but then there's another really great taco place that I love going to, and I can't remember the name, but it's off of Lee Trevino and Vista del Sol. Uh, but I just love Tacos al Pastor, um, and I, I forget I forget the name right now, but um, but it's super good, and um, they give you the the tacos with uh, you know like shaved pineapple and and cilantro, and and it's just delicious and a baked potato. So that's where I. 
for the Tacos al Pastor fans, Tacos Ajiji in Juarez. Okay. Yes. But they have an Ajiji in El Paso too. I think it's like right off of like the Yarbrough. It's on Yarbrough. Uh -huh. Yes, and it's on Yarbrough and that's too. delicious. And delicious. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. Okay, Brian, your turn. Maybe you've remembered now. So this or is maybe the no, no, it is, it's real obvious that it should have been very easy. So LNJ was what I was going to tell you. So I, 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 just because of the experience and the trip out to LNJ, <coughs> excuse me, we mentioned LME, I think, downtown for tacos, which are really great um, high-end tacos. I think the rabbit taco is one of my, one of my favorite things uh, to get there. And just kind of a shout out back to Progress 321 uh, taco tour that we did a couple months ago, which was awesome. And I got to experience some tacos at some locations that I hadn't before. A lot of fun. Great way to experience culinary uh, culinary experience here in El Paso. That was awesome. Yeah, I did not get to do that taco tour, but I know a lot of our, our progressors did and some of our expats too. And that was all Annalisa planning. But there was a taco tour in the early days of Progress 321 in Juarez too. So when we're able and we're starting to move around more, that's on my bucket list of making this happen this year, Jessica, is that we can do a Juarez taco tour, maybe Juarez and El Paso taco tour. Yes, I love that. In the coming months or definitely, in the, you know, before this year, so over this progress year. Okay, so um, I saw some other great comments. I'm waiting for more questions if other people have them. Um, bone marrow tacos from Valentine's, that was from Valerie. I saw fish tacos from the Little Shack, Tacoholics, and Chico's. Um, and let's see, more bone marrow tacos. Yes, Andrea was like kudoing that, I agree. And then um, tacos from Taco Shop. I, I think maybe Andy, I can't tell who just ordered them. Tacos from Taco Shop. Okay, so I'm waiting for questions. Okay, so this is one that maybe it's on my mind because I love events and I love the concerts and I love the big festivals and all the things. I know each three of our panelists in different ways are connected to those things. Obviously tourism and those are also tourism arms. What are we hearing? What are we saying? You know, everybody like the unknown is also there. So it's okay if you're like, we just don't know. But like, as tons of us are on boards for other nonprofits, Progress 321, you know, we plan events during the year too. Everybody's itching to do it. Any insights, mm -hmm. things you can share? What are you hearing? Mm -hmm. How are you guys planning? Are you just doing the like, take it down the road three months and then see where we are in another month? Like, how are we approaching things these days for events? Is, is this a question for me? It is kind of most, you are the most I'm expert. Just, Okay. The other I, I mean, I'm waiting to hear from you because we're also, I've got a staff meeting tomorrow and film festival is yeah. like, what are I'm we talking, doing? I talk, I talk to Doug, to Doug. I talk to Doug <laughs> every Friday. Doug and I huddle every Friday and we assess kind of what we, what we think the future is. Um, and if I was really good at the future, I would be at the win right now when they reopen because then I would be able to predict the future and be making, you know, making a lot of money in Vegas. Um, the, the event component is, is really probably for us, you know, the huge X factor um, in terms of how our operations will go forward. Um, you're, and I think you're seeing some indicators at the state level, you know, that they want to get things open and get things going. Although uh, we did just see uh, the Texas Education Commissioner came out and said that, you know, for high school graduations, that those would have to be in outdoor venues. They would not permit them to be in indoor venues. And if you recall, just even last week, school districts announced dates at the Don Haskins Center um, for high school graduations, which was something uh, we were watching very closely to see if that was going to be able to go forward. Um, you know, that if the different folks involved in that were going to, you know, were they going to fill the Don to 10,000 people or were they going to have, you know, 300 kids graduate and tell each kid you could bring two parents and each, they did forget each get a section to themselves, um, that kind of thing. So it kind of, there was, it could be an indicator of what was going to, how that's going to work. Uh, I think the challenge is going to be, I think it is going to be very difficult to do events in the manner in which we know them, to do what we do, to put, I mean, essentially that element of our business is about putting a lot of people in one room to have an experience together. And that, and that experience is about connectivity with other folks. That's what, that's what makes the live event, uh, I think, so, uh, so powerful and something that people pay to participate in and to take part, to take part in. And that's going to be hard to do um, until we have com really complete control uh, over the spread of COVID-19. And I think that's going to that's be an element I think that's going to be heavily dependent on you know, the vaccination component. And I think realistically, that's, that's many, many months away. Um, the other com thing that I think is going to make things difficult, if you look at for like national tours, artists and performers that, that uh, take place in our theaters, the Abraham Chavez Theater and the Plaza Theater, 
if Texas says, hey, we're going to allow these events to take place and they open Texas up, but in order to put together a tour, that show's got to stop in a lot of different places. And Texas is a big is a big state, I'll give it that. And you can probably make a tour out of nothing but Texas, but mostly you're going to see them move across the nation. And so now you're dealing with different cities, different states, different jurisdictions, and what is and what isn't going to be allowed, and how are they going to be able to build a tour around that? Um, and then, of course, I think that there, you know, there's the some element of, you know, is it a different people have different positions about whether or not they think it's appropriate for us to be out or, or creating these gatherings or not. And so I think there's, there is some uh, impact from the, both a social media and a fan perspective about you know, whether that's going to make sense for artists to do, even if they are able to do it. So realistically speaking, I think events um, are probably not in our immediate future, um, but, but I think reimaginations of events could occur. And I don't want to let the cat out of the bag on the film festival, but um, yeah, Doug is very much wants to move forward with the festival and we agree. We definitely think that we think there's a way to do it. Um, so we've kicked some great ideas around so that these events can still exist and we can still take some of the, what are some of the best parts of those events and make them and make them happen. But I think the events that, as you know, what I think are, are not in our immediate future, unfortunately, until we can control. Yeah. Um, other things to add or insights to add, Andrea and Jessica insights you're hearing on a state or comparing to other counties, things that are happening in other counties, other cities related to events, gatherings, or just opening back up that you're hearing. Yeah, no, I hear. I, I actually agree with everything that Brian said. I think a lot of it is also going to depend on some of the restrictions that we'll still have with other cities, um, not just within the state, but also um, other cities across the country, just depending upon what, where they are and how relaxed they are in terms of the different phases of, of uh, reopening. Um, but um, uh, I think that a lot of that will, will kind of... Um, It'll just be like a phased in process, you know, little by little, we'll start kind of seeing exactly how um, these directives will play um, either have a consequence or have a, a still, you know, a, a good kind of uh, give a give a good uh, perspective to to the elected officials at the state level that, that this is working out. I think um, today, right, the governor announced the second kind of phase of many of these other um, sectors in the industry that are hopefully going to be starting to reopen in uh, May 8th, but then we know from a lot of our constituents just across the city that they're saying, you know, maybe it's too early, right? So you get, you get a lot of concern from even some of the business owners, right? Um, that, are, that are still very uh, uh, concerned about reopening just because they also worry about the health and safety of their employees. And then the PPE and all of the other equipment and stuff that you have to provide uh, probably for these types of events too, um, there's going to be a lag with, with getting that equipment in because so many people uh, all over the country are, are asking for, for that, that type of equipment. So just, just you know, it's, it's going to be, I guess, a day by day, we'll, we'll start tracking how that will how impact um, us here in El Paso. And from the um, from the county's perspective, uh, I don't know how many of you all have been along the Mission Trail lately, um, but you know all of El Paso County is something that you know we are obviously concerned about. So partnering with uh, you know Brian and Veronica and, and working with them on initiatives in the city are important and trying to support what we can in the city. But at the same time, we understand that the Mission Trail area and the areas outside of the the actual city of El Paso. Um, probably need a little bit more um, love and attention right now in the way of infrastructure and um, just getting things set up so that they are tourist friendly. So I hate to say that this probably is not dramatically impacting the tourism um, out that way because it's relatively um, small in comparison to what it could be were we able to have things like signage <laughs> and you know maybe even some um, some additional advertisements and things like that so we're really trying to work on getting the um the actual infrastructure put together so that it is more tourism friendly we were working on some great plans with veronica and team to get an actual tour established on a regular basis brooke i am loving your shadow um, <laughs> um <laughs> And so those those things are not, in my mind, impacted by COVID. So we're still able to continue moving those projects forward because we were so far behind. So hopefully by the time, you know, the smoke clears, we'll actually have things so that we can move forward um, and, and really put some robust plans and packages together. So. So yeah, just something to, to step up what I, I, I was saying. So 
Uh, one of the things we were talking about our strategy and our brief to council and others, hey, how's it going, David? Uh, was, uh, you know, we talked about our product and product development or assisting in product development, right? So we look at, you know, tra traditionally what we have marketed or talked about in terms of reasons to travel and visit El Paso. There are a lot of other elements that we can focus in on that are a fit for this so this post-COVID scenario we're talking about, and you're talking about the Mission Trail, our experiences out in the county or other areas, or really get diving into our uh, state parks and other outdoor assets between you know, Waco Tanks and Franklin Mountain State Park and other things that we can do that are kind of, that are really, for lack of a better term, that are, you know, that are social distance friendly type things. And so working with our partners, whether that, you know, the different uh, attractions, associations, we're talking about how do we turn you know, the product that you're, tr you're traditionally promoting, how do we make it the social distance friendly product and then and then push and communicate that out. So we'll be looking at a really kind of uh, putting a spotlight on some of the things that have always been here that are now really a, a great fit for this type of experience. That's great. You know, Brian, you got a question from our dear friend, Valerie Garcia. She said that you mentioned it'll be the year of road trips. Are you also going to be able to add some regional location suggestions to your website? Um, maybe they're already there and we just don't know, but like kind of helping make El Paso part of a larger, you know, yeah. regional. <laughs> so we have always taken a regional approach to tourism, uh, marketing and development. Uh, we work very closely with Southern New Mexico, Doniana County, uh, Cedar Juarez, the state of Chihuahua, uh, El Paso, uh, at the county, but then also in the Big Bend region. Uh, we've always felt like we are stronger as a region as a whole. Um, and we promote, you know, all the different things and experience you can have that are drivable from around the area. If you're staying here, we want you to experience the entire region. Uh, we think that makes it much more powerful. But yes, yeah, so, so what we're looking at are, are promoting these types of these road trip itineraries. We do have some itineraries built that are up on our website now. I think that we'll, we'll, we'll be making them a little more prominent in terms of how they're positioned on the site. Uh, because I think that's going to be the product that we're going to be leaning into. And so it's going to be, I think, where, you know, I where I think we're used to these experiences that involve, you know, big crowds or big groups of people indicate that that, that something is, uh, you know, it, 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 it gives you an idea of how important that particular that experience is. I think people are going to be looking for a lot more experiences uh, with smaller groups. And so we can, as I mentioned before, we can identify that product here. And, you know, one of the things we're just on a call with um, the state of Texas, both with the uh, uh, the head of the governor's office for economic development and tourism, as well as the head of the tourism office for the state. And one of the top, but you know, Texas has big wide open spaces and places. And so I think that we've got a great opportunity to really be able to message that not only for us here in this area, the surrounding region, but nationally as well is why you should be coming to Texas during this particular period. And of course, Texas is opening things up, you know, so, um, you know, whether, you know, whether, whether that's, but we can get into whether that, that makes sense yet or not. Um, it's happening, so uh, we can, you know, we can offer that. Definitely. Um, okay, so and we've got, are we going till 545 or are we going till six? I don't even know because my line is good. So, um, Brooke, you tell me. Uh, but we have either like 25 minutes or 10 minutes of more questions. So, progressors, don't be shy. This is like the least number of questions. I guess everybody's just enjoying their drink. I can come up with more. Um, however, I, I love hearing what you guys want to know about. So Patrick, this may be your moment to turn around the canvas and tell us how it's going while people think of their exciting questions. Catherine already got her question answered, so I know that's why she's not asking another question. I'm calling people out. Okay, so if you can't maneuver yeah, maneuver to see Patrick's screen because he is working on a beautiful piece there. It's looking great. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for sharing. He's on me. I like it. Rick, you're the host, right? So you can spotlight Patrick's video and then we will see Patrick. Ooh, now. let me do that. Oh, cool. Like right click Brian on is much more technology Zoom at Savvy than the rest of us, I think. Oh, that's not it, is it? <laughs> on, the little, on, the, on the three little dots by his name, you can yeah. pick spotlight video, and then it should force him to like be what we see. There oh, you go. Patrick, now Patrick. we can see oh, his now. piece if he turns it around. The lighting, I see. It, it was good. beautiful. There you go. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, that's looking great. Wow. Thank you. You, I love following your Instagram and seeing what you're working on, Patrick. Ooh, there's another one too. That's I like that one a lot. Very sure. That is great. Well, there, Brooke, you learned how to well, do you something. Know, 
Okay. Can we can we can we like turn this around and you have the rest you're getting questions from folks on can we ask questions going the other way? I think that sounds awesome. It's a happy hour. It should be conversational, right? Okay. Yeah. Pa um Patrick would probably appreciate if you take him off the spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, whatever. <laughs> I told you I'm a Zoom rookie. This is this is uncharted territory. I, I get the Facebook, but the the Zoom is a little uh, daunting. It's okay. You're doing good. Okay, Brian, you said you want to ask some questions, so let's yeah. do it. I so I, I'm curious, for folks on here, um, you know, coming off of I guess you know, kind of the stay at home stuff as we start to unlock I'll hear a little bit. I want to kind of get a feel for what are the, some of the first priorities of things that you want to do. Good question. So we can ask, I mean, if there's some of those that are here that are technically panelists that can unmute and talk. There's a lot of people that are technically panelists. We can, we can kind of get it as questions or what have you. You can also comment if you don't want to speak out loud or afraid you're going to step on somebody else. But I know lots of you are not shy, so just feel free to unmute yourself and jump in and share. So. Um. So a brick is probably over there trying to figure out how to unspotlight. And so <laughs> the trick brick is uh, same way you did before in the upper corner the dots and you can turn it off. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Gloria shared she's thinking staycations sound good since travel isn't such a great idea right now. Um, that was Gloria Tessa. Um, I know for me, I, I just want to like go see my friends. I, so I will look forward to the time when we can just have small gatherings at least and even though I really love the big gatherings too. So trying to just be happy with the small gatherings. But I see Eve, who's with the Rhino, says she's excited for sports to come back on TV and probably also in person too. I know we're all, I'm interested to see myself, I'm sure a lot of us are, like how sports come back. Um, Cause I think that'll take a lead both on a collegiate level, high school level, um, obviously on the professional level, even if they're, you know, broadcast audiences and not physical, too much physical audience, right, Brian? Or the other. first first sport uh, broadcast resumed for live sport is supposed to start this week. Um, uh, baseball from South Korea, and it comes on at about like morning. <laughs> okay, I see family get, family true. events and carne asada like, get togethers. People are looking for Mika says baseball go Dodgers. She's got to get her Dodgers plug in. I know that Mika. I like it. You're even wearing like Dodgers blue today. Um, Gabriel says, everyone's welcome to have a staycation at the Hampton Inn and Suites at El Paso Airport. <laughs> yeah, and that, we think that's going to be an important, I mentioned it before, I think this is going to be an important strategy is like getting us out and, and really getting back into uh, supporting the hospitality businesses of our community, you know, and, you know, and coming up with the ways that we can still engage with that that are, uh, you know, responsible with respect to public health concerns. Definitely. Yeah, I also, I, I, sorry, yeah. I'm just going to say, I, I couldn't agree more. And I really think that the businesses that are able to, um, to innovate are really going to be leaders. You know, I, I mentioned I'm not from El Paso and I know that El Paso restaurants and, and, you know, all types of businesses are doing some amazing things, but I just have to share what I thought to be a pretty unique um, story from Kansas City, where there's a bunch of restaurants that are co-oping on like um, creating plates, right? Like, so if you wanted to do like a fancy dinner at home, you um, pay like $60 and you get food from like three different restaurants and just, I don't know, it's just like a unique thing, right? Like we're all stuck in our house. Everybody has to eat. How do you make to go food? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like better. And so you, you see all these places doing to go liquor. Um, I have a bunch of friends that picked up margaritas to go and, you know, I mean, just looking at ways to innovate and just like we were talking about with the hotel and the staycation, I mean, if there's something that you could do where you could put together a package for people who are staying in your hotel with like movies and popcorn and you know what I mean? Like something to just make it different. It might cost you an extra $5, but it's that packaged experience that I think we'll start seeing a lot more of. Definitely. How do we have those small experiences? And, um, and also like, you know, people still have things to celebrate, right? Like businesses that are adapting and uh, being creative, even though these celebrations may be on a smaller scale or, you know, I spent, I'll just be honest, I bought like personalized cookies because I haven't seen my staff in like six or seven weeks now and I miss them and we had a new staff member starting this week and I feel like I bought like personalized cookies and I like spent two hours driving all over El Paso like 
delivering them on Sunday so we could all open them together on a Zoom meeting. So, and I mean, I've seen, I don't know if we have anybody from the chamber on here or anybody who's on the chamber's board, but I saw them being like, are there businesses out there that will deliver food, but like get it to everybody at the same time because we want to have like food during our board meeting, right? So businesses that are being creative and adapting to how to create communal experiences, even if we're not physically communing in the same space, um, it, there's some cost to it, but it's also, it's opportunity too, right? I don't know, Jessica, if you've seen other cool ideas or things that you've seen people doing to adapt that you just want to shout out to as well. No, I mean, I think, I think uh, Andrea's right. You know, those that are innovating and just adapting. I mean, we've seen um, a lot of folks support a lot of our local businesses. Um, I think that's been, you know, that always even pre-COVID, I mean, there was such a big support for, for Main Street, right? And for a lot of those Predominantly, a lot of them are centered around like those neighborhoods. I think we've seen um, a, a number of businesses around Five Points, for example, how over the last few years, right, they've, they've really kind of been up and comers and, and now they're having to kind of shift and a lot of them are still seeing themselves as startups. And it's really cool because they're really figuring out, you know, new delivery mechanisms. A lot of them that didn't probably have that specific product or that service, they're still figuring out how to leverage and partner um, uh, with others. And I, I think it's, that's, that's going to be the key is can we adapt? Can we be flexible enough? And then can we as a community provide those resources and those tools? Because I think that that digital divide still exists. So I think for many people, you know, um, uh, ordering online um, is probably not as easy, but, you know, everyone has their cell phone. And so as long as you can leverage those Grubhubs, Postmates, Instacart. I mean, that's all a big deal now. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that, that makes me think of a question for you, Andrea. Um, is there anything the county's doing to advocate for connectivity in the parts of the county that may not be as digitally connected or may have some gaps in service? Why, yes, we are. <laughs> so I didn't know I actually, yeah. something up, I didn't So, it yeah, I, I actually have a couple of projects that we're planning on taking to Commissioner's Court to um, receive, hopefully, the nod to provide funding for. Um, but we've been working fast and furiously um, since we started working from home, actually, to move a project forward that we were planning on starting in 2021, where we're potentially looking at um, county-owned broadband of some sort. So right. whether that is... Um, you know, a nonprofit or a utility arm. I have no idea what something like that might look like, uh, but we are looking for um, funding in, in an um, EDA grant that we would um, put forward for a feasibility study and a business plan to look at how we can get broadband on a larger scale um, to the, the lower valley area specifically, um, but then also possibly even working to improve, you know, what we have throughout El Paso County. I think many of us who are working from home right now, regardless of where your location is, have um, experienced some sort of connectivity issue. And so, you know, whether you're in the heart of El Paso or if you're, um, you know, all the way out, um, you know, in, in Tornillo, uh, there, there's some type of, you know, issue that we have all faced at one point or another. And I think if El Paso is going to be competitive. Um, throughout the county that having quality broadband is super important and so far our commissioner's court has been very very um, supportive of that so we're looking at moving forward relatively quickly um, with a plan we are partnering with the Loya center at UTEP to try and get some of those things off the ground um, quickly so yes we are working on them and we are also hoping to take advantage of the over 600 million dollars in federal stimulus funding that has been set aside to go for um, broadband funding so, um, so yes, to answer your question. Thank you. Well, and it's so important that the folks in the, you know, in that policy area in our county and our city are attuned to those things, paying attention to those things and making sure that we are nimble and ready to, you know, put in those proposals and, and pull down those dollars as well. So um, I love Catherine's comment. She just shared with us too, that she's looking forward to um, having her 17 year old be able to see his friends, um, that he's sweet for not making fun of her and making him have, wanting to have mom and son movie night every night. Um, I'm sure, you know, depending on what age the, um, your, your coworkers are at home as Brooke, as I see great photos of her coworkers almost every day on social oh, media. Too. Look at Mika's little girl hanging out with her. I know. And I love it. And like Chris had his daughter on, I can't scroll the screen completely and everything. Um, but you know, we all have our own experiences with them and how many, you know, 
they, we have three-year-olds and four-year-olds that know what Zoom is now and know how to navigate it maybe better than some of us do. Um, let's see if I'm missing it. And I just got to like give a shout out to the parents that are working from home all day and doing yeah. school at home. Like I, I use Brooke because I'm on the other half of a conference, got video conference with her all the time. I do not know how she's doing it. I really don't. Like, I, I don't know how, how she's managing to be full-time mom, full-time teacher for two, and then full-time employee. So I, 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 I hats off to all the people that are managing. Not well. At the same time. <laughs> not well at all. Drinking is important, Well, too. I wasn't going to say that your work has really suffered, so but since you brought it up, I will. We should They're toast though to all the moms and and the dads. We should we should really toast guys because that is a lot of work and you deserve to you know be recognized. <laughs> That's a nice Cinco de Mayo toast. I raise my pineapple glass to you. Yay for pineapple glasses! But I also say that um, we should also just have a toast to not letting social distance us from social. And um, Prior Suit 2 One is very much a social group, and it's been so fun and encouraging to see um, so many folks connect and join. I think some of our attendance at these events has been actually higher than some of our in-person events because there's less barriers to actually getting together when you can do it from your backyard or from your dining room table um, or from my screaming child downstairs who's telling me it's time to be done. Um, but um, that's the one and a half year old. But um, it's so lovely to see you guys. There are more opportunities this week. Brooke, do you want to just give a rundown of the remaining um, events for Travel and Tourism Week um, for those who may have joined us a little bit late before we sign off? Yes, uh, thank you for that. We do have a number of um, events uh, finishing out uh, National Travel and Tourism Week and celebrating Economic Development Week as well. Um, tomorrow, we at noon, we will be joining Chef Andres Padilla of the uh, Plaza Hotel. Um, he'll be doing a cooking demonstration, so log to, visit the Facebook page for that and watch with us. On Thursday morning at 8.30, please join us via Zoom webinar uh, where we will be chatting with Rick Francis, uh, who is not only on the governor's task force, but also on the mayor's task force. And Brian Crow will be talking to him about uh, what we will need to do to restart the economy locally and, and uh, on a state level. Later that morning, we'll be uh, talking to Cliff Ward of Orange 142. He happens to be uh, the digital advertising agency that Visit El Paso uh, utilizes uh, quite well in our marketing efforts. Uh, and he'll be talking about um, the digital landscape and how customer uh, expectations and um, and uh, how their, their experiences are going to change moving forward. On Friday, we will be uh, doing a tour of our um, beautiful mission trails. We start at the San Elizario mission. And the time escapes me, but all this information is av uh, available via our Facebook page. So take a walk through over 400 years of history with our team. Uh, and then on Saturday, we're having a musical um, showcase if you will some great bands all that all the bands listed or that will be participating are also listed on our facebook page so we've got a full lineup uh, we'll all be zoomed out by that point um, but uh, we're, we're trying to to showcase our community as much as possible and then celebrate uh such a great industry and um something we miss very much oh well thank, thank you Brooke, for all your help but i i wanted to jump in real quick emily thank you for doing a great job at moderating. I, I can't emphasize enough, you've moderated several of our progress events um, these last couple of weeks and have done a fantastic job. So Aww. thank you so much for, for jumping in doing this for us. We appreciate it. Well, there's tons of work done behind the scenes and not by me because Teresa and um, not only Teresa, but a lot of PARS 321 volunteers that help put together the panel, whether it's board members or other volunteers from our team like Andy and, and Gracie, um, both the Andys, so I, and Melissa and our Ghost Light team that helps make sure that you guys know about them and remind you to attend. So um, thank you guys for being part of it. Thank you, Andrea, Jessica, and Brian for being our panelists, but officially you guys all became our panelists today. So, uh, so please um, tune in for the future events and uh, more to come soon. We're gonna do another panel event in a couple of weeks and we've got some other great roulette, lunch roulettes coming up soon. So stay tuned. Um, a final toast for Cinco de Mayo. You don't have to be a parent. You don't have to be a fur parent. Just Cinco de Mayo, Taco Tuesday. Enjoy it, progressors. A toast to you all. Looking forward to seeing you in person sooner rather than later. Salud.
Cheers, everybody. Thank you for participating, and thanks for everybody that made this happen, especially Emily and the team. So thank you guys. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> thank you, Brooke. Brooke, over there. Well, there's work in the, you she's working the switchboard over there. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys. Have, one. Have a great Tuesday. <laughs>